My first compressed air engine worked quite well. At least I thought it did for a first attempt. But I can do better. So we're gonna scrap this one. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. <coughs> so yeah, I'm gonna make some improvements. I'm going to explain how this engine works in less than 25 seconds. This engine is started by hand by spinning a flywheel which is attached to the crankshaft. As the crankshaft rotates, the piston and pushrod move up and down the cylinder. Just as the piston passes top dead center, the pushrod opens the air inlet valve and compressed air is released, forcing the piston down the cylinder. The linear motion of the piston is converted to rotational motion at the crankshaft and spins the flywheel. The flywheel and crankshaft continue to rotate and this forces the piston and pushrod back up the cylinder. Once again, as the piston passes top dead center, the pushrod opens the valve and releases a burst of air into the engine. This cycle repeats until there is no air left. I explained in a bit more detail how the engine works in the previous video, so check that out if you're interested. So the first change is the pushrod mechanism. The previous engine relied on gravity for the pushrod to drop. This meant the fit had to be quite loose, so I think a good amount of air leaked through here. So the new pushrod is connected directly to the camshaft, so the rotation of the camshaft will pull it back down rather than relying on gravity. This means the fit can be slightly tighter, so hopefully less air will leak through. The second major change is the diameter of the air inlet. I've decreased this to try and improve the runtime. This was an awful idea because I'm a complete idiot. <laughs> there was also a few minor changes to the crankshaft and the piston cylinder, but these were mainly to try and reduce the weight of the engine. The engine is of course powered by compressed air, so ideally I would use an air compressor. Now unfortunately I don't have a compressor in my bedroom. Apparently this would be unsafe. I also can't put an air compressor in my garage because there's no electricity in there. Why, you may ask? Because it leaks more than the f***ing Titanic. Hence why I'm using a 2 litre bottle. But not just any 2 litre bottle. Only Lidl's finest freeway lemonade. So I'll quickly show you how I convert this 2 litre bottle into a compressed air tank. Oh my god, he died! Keys. Fuck! Just need to steal a 6mm drill bit from my stepdad's toolbox. Ooh, you're hard. Why? 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 So basically all you want to do is just drill through this part by here. I cut the Schrader valve out from an old inner tube, and I put the o-ring on there to improve the seal. <laughs> so yeah, the hole's not big enough. I place another o-ring on the valve, and then screw the nut on. So now we've just got to test whether it can hold any pressure. And I'm going to test it next to the dead corpse of the previous air tank. So it's pressurized to about 30 psi. No leaks, so looking good. So I'm not going to bore you with the long engine build montage. But basically, I cut some brass, put the brass in the holes, slid the piston and pushrod in, chuck some o-rings in there, put some screws in some holes and attach some nuts to some screws, and voila, an engine. Oh, and I did have to make a gasket for this joint. 
as the 3D printed parts don't fit perfectly together. Now, ideally you would use a rubber gasket, but if you're like me, and you spend an unhealthy amount of money on Amazon, they actually send you free gasket material with each purchase. I'm making the gaskets from cardboard. <clears throat> By colouring in the gasket black, you get about an extra 10% efficiency. No one cares about the gasket, just test the engine you fuck. So let's see if it works. <laughs> that was an interesting noise. Nope. <laughs> so it kind of works, but it's making a weird noise and I don't know why. One thing I thought it might have been is the bottle plug because it kind of throttles the air, but um, I tested this. It's not that. So it must be the engine then, but I'm not sure what part of the engine. So I tested the new engine configuration yesterday and fair to say it was a bit of a failure. I was this close to fully redesigning the engine, but I think I figured out what it is. So what I think is happening, because I decreased the diameter of the inlet, I think that it's limiting the flow of air too much. So I've increased the air inlet diameter to 10 millimeters. I've also increased the size of the valve. So I've printed off an 11 millimeter sphere to act as the ball valve. Take two. Pretty much as good as I was expecting. If my ball valve wasn't leaking, it would work really well. If you listen to the two engines, one after the other. You can definitely tell that the version 2.5 engine is much quicker. Now because the 3D printed ball valve just constantly leaks, I had to keep pumping up the engine while I was measuring the RPM. So it's not strictly fair to compare this RPM with the RPM of the version 1 engine. But does that stop me from doing it? No. So I couldn't pressurize the version 2.5 engine to any more than about 30 psi. So for the version 2.5 engine, at a pressure of about 30 psi, the engine had an RPM of 435. And the version 1 engine was tested at 60 psi, but this only had an RPM of 315. So this is a 40% increase in RPM compared to the previous engine. So it actually works surprisingly well and I'm pretty happy with it, but there's still a couple of issues I need to iron out. But well, this video is probably getting too long anyway, and most people would have clicked off already, so I'll just put them in a list. If you like the video, like the dumb video, and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. So 
that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.